Hey friends, it's Lauren. Thanks for joining me in my craft room. Today I'm going to be creating a card using brand new products from Pretty Pink Posh's September 2024 release. I'm going to be using the Fall Harvest stamp set and coordinating dies, the Mayored Autumn Harvest stencil set. So I'm going to start with stenciling and I've picked out some distress oxides that I'm going to use. I'm going to use squeezed lemonade, carved pumpkin, picked raspberry, and kitsch flamingo. I thought it'd be fun to do a mix of pink, orange, and yellow, as well as some black and dark grays for today's project. I'm gonna be using my waffle flower grip mat, and I just have a piece of white cardstock that I know I can trim down, and I'm gonna start with stencil A, which is the full image or full pattern of our pumpkins and gourds and I'm going to use the lightest color pink to fill in all of these shapes. So I'm going to use that kitsch flamingo pink and I have a blending brush that I have dedicated to distress oxides that I'm going to use to add this first layer of color. So I'll just completely cover all of these pumpkins. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do a blend of the two pinks, so I brought out both and got them both ready, but I'm going to only cover it completely with the Kitsch Flamingo. Once I'm happy with how much color I have through this first layer of the stencil, I'll go ahead and do a stencil reveal, which is always the fun part. And this is a fun, interesting background so far. Next, I'm going to add the B layer stencil. I'm just using both stencils to make sure I have the B layer lined up perfectly to where I added those uh, pumpkin and gourds through the A layer. And this has the details of the pumpkins as well as the shapes of the leaves. So I'm gonna start with that squeeze lemonade and my yellow blending brush. And I'm not doing any masking. I'm just gonna do my best here to add that yellow distress oxide to all of the leaves on the stencil. I'll go ahead and peel that off. I cleaned off the stencil and then I put it back on. And this time I'm adding in the details of all the gourds using my darker pink, the picked raspberry distress oxide. Once that's done, I can add my C layer, which will be the details of the leaves. So I'll get that set up. And then I'm going to use the carved pumpkin. So this is the leaves as well as the stems of my gourds. And again, like the first layer, I'm just going to add a single color of this carved pumpkin orange through all the stencil. And that way I'll bring in that kind of third color. It's a fun, like funky colored background, but let's add a little splatter. I'm using my black luster brush marker from scrapbook.com. I just squeeze enough to get some liquid into the brush and then use my hand to tap it onto the background. I'll go ahead and set that aside to dry while I clean my stencils and clean up my desk so we can move on to the next part of the card. I'm going to do some stamping. I have a bunch of scraps of paper. I try not to be wasteful of my scraps, so I'm going to use some smaller pieces to stamp my gourds, my little basket, as well as the leaves kind of cluster, which would look really cute in the basket as well. But I'm going to use those as some added decoration to my little gourd basket. So I'll get everything set up in my Misty. I'm going to be able to fit all three of these onto the, the scrap white papers I have. Of course, you can use a larger piece. This is me just being a little stingy with my scraps. Uh, luckily with my Misty and these super sturdy magnets, my papers do stay in place while I stamp. So I do stamp a couple times to make sure I have nice clean black lines my black onyx black sassy club ink i don't know why i brought out my versafine i was like oh well, i'll use one of these but i'm going to use alcohol markers so i do use my onyx black ink from the sassy club i'm using a pressure tool just to help make sure i get good even pressure on my stamped images and once i'm happy with how they look i'll go ahead and put away my stamps and my misty I'm going to zoom in a bit here and I'm going to use Olo markers to color in. So for the pinks, I'm using RV 0.4 as the darker color and RV 0.2 as the lighter color. So you can see here I'm adding some shadow or the darker color 
to my pumpkin and I did leave a little bit of white on the edge so next to the black inks so that way there would be a bit of a lighter highlight to the edge of the pumpkin sections that to me just makes it look a little more round in my opinion so uh, that's how I colored in with the pinks for the oranges I'm using O 2.4 as the shadow and O 2.2 as the lighter. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat that same coloring process with my gourd. I did add that O 2.4 to the stem of my pumpkin. I didn't completely color it in. I realized later that I wanted it to be a little more yellow. So I'm going to use Y.23 to color in the leaf and the um, the stems of my two little gourds here. Once I'm done with the coloring, I'm bringing in that, bringing in back the darkest color to add a little stippling just to give it some interest. And of course my white gel pen to cover where I went outside the lines and to add some highlights to my images as well. I'll use that same color combination on my leaves and my acorn, but I'm going to show you a little bit more shadowing with my yellow. So Y2.3 is the darker yellow that I'm using and Y2.2 is the lighter color. So I'll finish coloring in my leaves and my acorns with that same color combination, but for the basket I'm going to bring in more of the black, but in this case it's going to be a dark gray because I don't really like coloring in black. To me black is dark gray <laughs> when I'm using alcohol markers. So the darkest tone is CG9. I am using cool grays and then my mid tone is CG7 and finally CJ5 for the lightest. These have a little bit more space so I did use three shades. I'm going to use CG5 again to be the shadow of the basket part, not so much where the binding of the basket is. This is the actual basket pieces. So CG5 will be the darker tone and then CG3 I'm going to just completely color it in. I want it to be a much lighter gray. So I have just a bit of shadow and then I'm coloring in my basket. Once I'm all done coloring in those sections, I'll bring back again a darker color to add a little bit of stippling, some cute little dots. I don't know why, I just think it adds some fun to the images. So that is CG7. I did use CG9 to add a couple to the darker parts of the basket, but you can't really see them. Again, brought in my gel pen to add in some highlights. I like how the coloring turned out, so I'll go ahead and use my coordinating dies to cut the pieces out. And my background is also dry, so we can move on to card assembly. I'm going to use this second largest of my wonky stitch rectangle dies as the frame for what I am wanting to build on my card, but I wasn't sure if I wanted that to be on my pattern background with a black card base. Uh, but the more I was looking at it, the more I didn't like how small of a space I was using. So I thought, what if I die cut it with the largest one instead, and then I'll use black to create a frame or a panel for my card. So last minute switch, I went to the largest of all the wonky stitch rectangle dies, ran that through my die cutting machine. So I have this background piece that I'll attach later on to a card base. But then I was using the second largest frame and I realized I don't want to cover up all of my stencil details either. So instead of a panel, I'm going to make a frame. So I'm going to use the second largest wonky stitch rectangle as well as the third largest or the second smallest or the third one, whatever you want to call them. And I am going to cut a frame out of some black cardstock. So I'll go ahead and run those with the, my black cardstock and I'm going to center them together so it creates about as even of a frame as I can and that will give me that black layer uh, pop of color that I wanted on my more pastel funky fall colors without completely covering my background. So I also thought while I have my black cardstock out, let me die cut my sentiment. So I'm die cutting my many thanks the word dies out of that black cardstock as well. For the shadow pieces, I'm going to bring in some kind of a soft pastel pink and I will die cut the shadow for my many thanks sentiment out of the pink cardstock.
I have all of the different pieces for my card, so I'm going to start layering everything together. Starting with my sentiment, it is pretty easy. I'm just gonna add some liquid adhesive to the back side of my Many Thanks black die cut pieces. I am using a glue with a fine point tip and just using my finger to tap off any like excess of the glue and then adding that to the white shadow. I know you, if you've been here before, you know how much I love sentiments with shadows. It just makes it a, like pop up a little bit more off your card, but also so much easier to glue down to your card, uh, especially with foam adhesive. Really thin, intricate dies for sentiments are amazing, but really hard if you want them to pop off your card. So I'm going to now adhere my frame to my panel. So I'm gonna use some black foam adhesive and I'm just gonna cut strips so that way it fits behind all four sides of this wonky stitch frame that I created. So I'll go ahead and get that covered. I'll peel off all of the release paper and adhere that to the center of my stenciled background. For the rest of my images, I'm going to layer them together. So the pumpkin and the gourd are inside the bucket and the leaf details, I'm gonna cut that in half and put it on the sides of the bucket. So I'll go ahead and glue the gourds into the bucket with some liquid adhesive. And I brought out some thicker foam. The uh, black I use is a little bit thinner. It's not one millimeter, but it's thinner than two millimeters. So I'm gonna use the two millimeter foam I have to attach these images to my card where it will layer onto the stenciled background. Just like I attached the gourds to my basket on with liquid adhesive, I'm gonna repeat that process with my now two leaf clusters since um, I did cut it in half. And I'm gonna add the foam adhesive just behind the pumpkin, the gourd, and the basket because that's where it's going to adhere to the stenciled background. The leaf pieces are gonna overlap with my black frame, so I don't wanna put any foam on those pieces because it will be too thick to attach to the card. Oh, I did use a fine liner black pen where I noticed that my stamp line wasn't as crisp as I would like it. So I just tried to fix the little areas where I wanted to make it look more filled in um, from when I did stamp the image. Okay, so now I'm adding that two millimeter foam, just like I said, behind the pumpkin and the gourd and the basket. And I'll go ahead and attach that to the card. I wanna make sure that my many thanks is going to fit. So I'm going to leave enough room above and below my basket for my sentiment. So once that's in place, I'll go ahead and press down. And then for my sentiments, I'm just gonna use liquid adhesive to glue those down. So I added the many to the top and thanks to the bottom. I really love this scripty thanks. I think I could have even just moved my images a little bit more to the top and just use the thanks sentiment, but many thanks is obviously very great too. <laughs> So once those are in place, um, I'm going to get a top folding A2 card base. I'm just using my standard white cardstock, and I'll use my tape runner to attach um, the card front to the card base. I hope you enjoyed this fun little look at some of the new products released from Pretty Pink Posh. There are so many wonderful fall themed Thanksgiving if you're uh, in the U.S. that's coming up in November. So lots of really great products for thank you cards, Thanksgiving Day cards, or maybe some fall memory keeping. I really would love to know which product is your favorite from the release. I will have the new release linked down below in my description box if you'd like to check that out. I am an affiliate at no extra charge to you if you use my links and that would mean a lot to me. But I hope you had fun creating this unique colored Thanksgiving card. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll click like, and if you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe and come back. As always, you can find everything I use down below in the description box. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye.